I want you to answer this question. So I have let x equals to 10 in the global scope. Then I've created a block scope. Inside of that block scope, I've done console.log x. And then after that, I have done let x equals to 20. And then after that, I've done console.log x. What will be the output of these console statements? Or is this going to result in an error? Leave your answers in the comment section below. So I asked you guys this question in the last video. Before I give you the correct answer, let's talk about the top mistakes or the top wrong answers that I saw. So the first one is that this will result in an error because I've tried to create two variables with the same identifier x, but this is incorrect because I've created a new block scope here. This allows me to shadow the x variable in the outer scope. So this is perfectly fine in JavaScript. The other wrong answer was that this will print 10 and that this will print 20, but this is also incorrect because inside of this block, when JavaScript tries to resolve the identifier X, it first looks at the current scope and see if we have an X variable inside of the current scope. If it doesn't have an X variable, only then it will resolve to the X variable in its parents scope. But due to the behavior of let and const variables that before they are actually initialized, they enter into something known as the temporal dead zone. So that's why trying to access X inside of the temporal dead zone will result in a reference error here. So this marks the beginning of our temporal dead zone and we are trying to access X inside of the temporal dead zone. That's why it will result in a reference error, cannot access X before initialization. Again, I have a question for you. What will be the output of this code? So I have console.log X. Then I have two nested blocks. So the first block begins where I do where x equals to two. Then I create a nested block inside of it. Then I've created let x equals to five. Outside of this block, I've done console.log x. And then we exit the first block. What will be the output in this case? I posted this question in the last video and asked you guys what the output would be. Most of you got it correct, but there seemed to be still a bit of a confusion among a few people. So first of all, this code is not going to error. This is valid JavaScript code. Let's see what the output is going to be. So the first console log statement will print undefined. This is due to the declaration hoisting and the scoping of var variables. First of all, var variables are not block scoped. They are function scoped, or if there is no function, they will be scoped to the global scope. These curly braces do not really affect anything. And due to declaration hoisting, this code will behave as if the declaration of the X variable was done at the top of the scope. And this line will behave like this. Now let's talk about the other console log statement. This will print two. That's because in this block, we have declared a let variable and let variable are block scoped. So this variable inside of this block is essentially shadowing the variable in the outer scope. So when you exit this block, now this X again refers back to the original var variable. Now there might be one more question regarding these weird looking blocks and how are they practical or how are they useful? So I've added these blocks without any if or for statements just to keep the code simple. You can think of this code as something like this instead. So you can think of the first block as part of an if statement and you could think of the second block as part of a for statement. So the first block just does where i equals to 2 and the second block does let i equals to 5. As you can see the output in this case also remains. I have a practice question for you. So I have an if statement and the condition for this if statement is an empty array. Now if it is true it will print hello. If it is false it will print bye. What will be the output in this case? In the last post, I asked this question. The answer is quite simple for those of you who already know what truthy and falsy values are in JavaScript. Here's a quick recap. So these nine values on the screen are the nine falsy values in JavaScript. By falsy, I mean that they behave like false in Boolean contexts. This list does not contain an empty array, which means that an empty array is not a falsy value. It is a truthy value in JavaScript. That's why if you try to run this piece of code, it prints hello to the console. I want you to answer this question. Can you guess what will be the output of these three comparisons? Leave your answers in the comments below. In the last post, I asked you guys this question. So the first comparison is rather simple. In strict comparisons, the type is also compared. Now, since in this case, the type of one and the type of true is different, that's why this is going to print true. Second one is rather a tricky one because we are using the lose or the abstract inequality operator here. 
Now, in this case, we're trying to compare one and true. So your guess would be that the output of this is going to be false because both of them are truthy values. The output is correct. However, the fact that these two values are truthy might not be the reason why. Because in this case, the number one is not coerced to a Boolean value. So the comparison is not made between true and true. Instead, the Boolean true will be coerced to a number. And true, when coerced to a number, returns one. And since one is equals to one, this will print false. So instead of one, if you do two is not equals to false, it will now print true. If in this comparison, the number was being coerced to a Boolean, two would have been coerced to true, and this would have resulted in a false. However, in this comparison, the Boolean will be converted to a number instead. So when true is coerced to a number, it returns one. And since two is not equals to one, it returns true. This is definitely a tricky comparison and it's hard to remember what type will be coerced into what type. That's why it's generally recommended to just avoid the abstract equality or inequality operators altogether. The last one is a special value, which is NAN. In JavaScript, each NAN is a unique NAN. A NAN is neither strictly or loosely equal to another NAN. That's why when you try to do NAN is not equals to NAN, it results. I want you to answer this question. What will be the output of this code? So I have two functions, left and right. The left function returns console.log left and the right function returns console.log right. And finally, I've executed these two functions like this, left or right. What will be the output in this case? I asked this question in the last post and most of you got it wrong. The output is not going to be just left. It's going to be left and right both. The thing that most of you missed out on was the fact that console.log returns undefined. So when you call the left function, it returns console.log left, which simply just prints left to the console and returns undefined. In the original question, when you call left or right, since left returns undefined, which is a falsy value. Now, in this case, the right function will also be executed and the right function will similarly print right to the console and return undefined. If you've been enjoying my JavaScript quiz based questions so far, then I want to tell you about this free JavaScript assessment that I created. It has 40 such similar questions that I've been posting on my reels recently. So these questions are MCQ based so that you can test your own knowledge about JavaScript. You can figure out what are the gaps in your knowledge. I've also provided a free notion template that has a javascript study plan so that you can use the quiz to find the gaps in your knowledge and then use the study plan to fill those gaps in if you're interested you can check it out using the link in my bio i want you to answer this question what will be the output of this code so i've created a call to this function called greet and i've passed the argument john to this function then i have created another function using the function expression syntax so var greet equals to this arrow function which accepts name and prints good day comma name and then i've created a function definition after this and i've done function greet which again accepts the same parameter and instead of printing good day it now prints hello comma name and finally, I've again done greet John. So what will be the output in this case? I asked you guys this question in a recent video. The answer or the output is going to be hello John and good day John. This is because of how var variables and functions are hoisted in JavaScript. Due to hoisting, this code snippet will behave something like this. So the function definition will be hoisted towards the top of the current scope. And the function expression, which is just a simple var variable, the declaration of this var variable will also be hoisted to the top of the current scope. However, the initializer of this var variable will not be hoisted. So the first call to the function greet John uses the function definition, hence why it outputs hello John. Then the execution reaches the initialization of the greet variable. So the function greet is now overridden by this function expression instead. That's why the second call to greet function will output good day john instead generally you should avoid redeclaring identifiers within the same scope but this code example is just meant to illustrate the difference between function expressions and function definitions you can learn about the execution context to understand what exactly is happening behind the scenes i will also be covering that in a future youtube video I have a practice question for you. I have a function called manipulate array that accepts one parameter. So it accepts an array as a parameter. Then it does array.push5. Then it reassigns array this new array value. And then it returns this array. Now outside of this function, I've created a list with four elements, one, two, three, four. And then I've called this manipulate array function with the list. And then I've printed the value of list. Then I have used the return value of this manipulate array to 
reassign a value to list and then I've again printed the value of list. So what will be the output of these two console statements? In the last post, I asked you guys this question. Today, let's discuss what the output is going to be. So I have a list with four elements, one, two, three, four. Then I call this function manipulate array and provide it the list as an argument. Now inside of this function manipulate array, the first thing that we are doing is pushing the value five to this array. Now, since arrays are objects in JavaScript and objects are reference types, in this case, due to pass by reference, when you do array.push five, the original array also gets updated with this new element. One thing to note here is that this array variable and this list variable but both of them point to the same array value in memory. So when you do array equals to this new array, which has only one element one, now you're creating a new value and updating the reference of the parameter only. The reference of the original array is not updated. And then you simply just return this parameter. For the first call to this function, manipulate array, we're not using the return value at all. So when you do console.log list, it will print one, two, three, four, five. Then we are calling this function again. And now a new element five will be pushed to the original list. But we are using the return value of this function to reassign our value to list. Since we are returning this new array from the function, so list will now contain a reference to this new array value. That's why when you try to print console.log list for the second time, now it just prints one. If you don't understand the difference between primitive types and object types in JavaScript, you can check out my latest YouTube video using the link in my bio. Can you guess what will be the output of this JavaScript code? So today's code example is a little bit more tricky. Let me walk you through it. I have an object called user1 with two properties, username and followers. Then I've created another object called user2 and I've used user1 to initialize user2. Then I've updated the followers property on user2 and set it to user1.followers++. Can you guess what will be the value of user1.followers and user2.followers? In the last post, I asked you guys this question. So I have an object user one with two properties. The value of followers is set to zero. Then on the next line, I have assigned the value of user one to user two. Since user one is an object, the reference will be copied to user two. So both user one and user two point to the same object value. So one thing we know for sure is that the value of user one dot followers and user two dot followers will be the same. Now moving on to the next line, when you do user two dot followers equals to user one dot followers plus plus, you can think of the statement like this user 2.followers equals to user 2.followers plus plus since both user 1 and user 2 point to the same value. We can further simplify this code and think of it like this let followers equals to 0 followers equals to followers plus plus. Now let's take a look at the increment operator. So the postfix increment operator increments the value by one, but the return value of this postfix increment operator will be the original value itself. For example, if you have x equals to zero, if you do x plus plus, x plus plus returns zero, which is the original value. But if you try to print x again, then you can see that the value of x was incremented by one. So when you do followers equals to followers plus plus, the increment Increment operator increments the value of followers, but it returns the original or the old value, which is zero in this case. So even though followers is incremented, it is immediately overwritten by the original value of followers, which was zero. That's why the output of this code is going to be zero and zero. Can you tell me what will be the output of this JavaScript code? I have a variable x equals to new number and I've provided the string one to it. Then I have let y equals to number. And again, I've provided it the string one. What will be the type of x and the type of y? In the last post, I asked you guys this question. Today, let's discuss the answer. So when you call the constructor function, which is when you use the keyword new, so if you do new number and pass it the string one, it will convert the string into a number, which will be one in this case, and it will return a wrapper object. That's why if you try to print the type of X, it prints object. However, when you call number as a normal function, it simply just converts the type of its argument into a number. It returns the primitive value one in this case. And when you try to check the type of Y, it prints number. Let's see if you could answer this question. I have a constant called greeting and I have initialized it with the value hello. If I set the value of greetings length property to 10, what will be the value of greeting dot length and greeting? The last post I asked this question. Today, let's discuss the output. 
After creating the string greeting, if you try to manipulate the value of the length property, which by the way is possible in JavaScript, it does not throw any error unless you're using the strict mode. In this case, the error message that you get is cannot assign to read only property length of string hello. Keeping the strict mode aside for now, why doing this does not set the value of the length property to 10? As most of you said, it's because strings are immutable. So setting the length to 10 does not really increase or add any white spaces towards the end of the string and it's not just the length property. If you try to manipulate or create any new properties on the string, it will not update that property's value to the assigned value. For example, if you try to do greeting.day equals to Monday, and if you try to again print the value of greeting.day, it will print undefined, even though you just defined it. All of this could be understood using the concept of wrapper objects and autoboxing in JavaScript, which I discussed in the previous posts. Primitive types, including strings themselves, don't have any properties or methods. When you try to access a property on a primitive type, it wraps it within a temporary object, does whatever it's supposed to do, and then discards that object. A new temporary object is created every single time you try to access a property or a method. You can watch my YouTube video on this topic to learn more about it. This is today's JavaScript question. What will be the output of this code? I have a function called counter. Inside of counter, I have created a variable called count and I've initialized it with the value zero. From this function, I'm returning an arrow function and this arrow function returns count plus plus. After this, I've called the counter function and I have assigned the return value of this counter function to the variable C. Then I've called the function C three times and printed its result. What is going to be the output of these three console statements? Look closely at the return value of this arrow function which is count plus plus. This is a postfix increment operator. You can find the answer to this in the next video. This is the question that I shared in the last post. Today, let's discuss the output. If you know anything about closures, then you would have been able to figure out the output of this code. If you don't know closures, then you can learn about it first because it's a little bit harder to explain in these 90 seconds. The output of these three console statements is going to be 0, 1, Two. Why? Because the function counter returns another function that closes over this count variable. This forms a closure. Initially, the value of the count variable is zero. When you call C the first time, when you call this arrow function the first time, it returns count plus plus. Remember from the previous video that the postfix increment operator increases the value of the variable by one, but it returns the original value. So this means that it will return the original value of count, which is zero, but it does increment the value of count from 0 to 1. So for the first console log statement, it returns 0 and prints 0. When you call C again, it does not create a new count variable. We're still accessing the same count variable whose value is 1 now. So this time count is incremented from 1 to 2, but the original value, which is 1, is returned. So it prints 1. And similarly, for the last call to this C function, it returns 2 and increments the value of count to 3. Pulling up on the last question that I posted about closures, can you guess what will be the output of this code? I have a function called useState that simply creates a state variable, initializes it to zero. Then it has two functions, a getState and a setState function. The getState function sets the value of the state variable to the provided argument and the getState function simply just returns state. From this useState function, we are returning both of these functions as an array. Then I've called the useState function twice and assigned the return values to these variables. Then I call set count one with the value five and set count two with the value 10. Can you tell what will be returned from get count one and get count two? You can find the answer to this question in the next video. I asked this question in the last video. Today, let's discuss the output. Every time you call the useState function, it creates a new state variable. So count1 and count2 are separate variables. So the state of count1 and count2 are two separate variables. When you call the function setCount1, it sets the value of count1 to 5. And when you call setCount2, it sets the value of the second state variable to 10. That's why the output is going to be 5 and 10. To understand exactly what's going on behind the scenes, you can learn more about closures and the execution context in JavaScript. And if you work with React, this code snippet will remind you of the use state hook in React, which also uses closures behind the scenes to make it possible for you to manage states in your applications.